last week, I made an announcement that I would be switching my main front-end framework from Vue.js to React. And today, we're going to be taking the first step in that transition by building an anime app using React, React Hooks, and TypeScript. Just as a quick note, this video is going to be more of a code review than it is me live coding the app. That being said, I will include snippets of the code that I think are useful to stare at. And you can always copy and paste the exact code from my Learn React GitHub repository. Cool. With that out of the way, let's get started with a demo. Basically, the project is just a simple thing right here. So you can like search different animes and all it does is it retrieves the data and it displays it on screen. And I do want to mention that we're not going to be diving too deep into the UI portion of this because honestly, that's just a ton of CSS. But what I will do is uh, get you guys started with React and TypeScript, how I was able to uh, create the project, set it up with TypeScript, get the data from the API and display it like so. Why am I working with React and TypeScript? I did mention this in my previous video, but basically the rundown is that TypeScript provides checking inside of your code editor. For example, say you create an object like user and you try to say user.name inside of your code. TypeScript is going to throw an error and it's going to underline it in red. It's just a very easy way to find any errors inside of your code really quickly. And that's why I wanted to get started with it because I want to build my own sort of startup. So using TypeScript is the fastest way to iterate quickly when you're coding because you know, you're going to not be so stressed out about whether changing a variable name is going to uh, destroy your application or make it you know go down or something like that thankfully getting started with typescript in react is super straightforward all you got to do is run the npx create react app command and uh, specify the project name so in this case i do uh, one underscore anime and then do dash dash template typescript and what that does is instead of creating a folder with JSX files and JavaScript files and things like that, it's just going to convert everything to TypeScript files. And the one real file that we care about, at least for this project, is the app.tsx file. And so this is how you set up your project with TypeScript. You know, you run this command, you go to the app.tsx file, remove everything, and then just display the high. And that should sort of get you up to speed to where I am right now. So I knew I wanted to make an anime app and there were a few options. So I went to this website called rapidapi.com and I just did a little bit of a search of what are the most popular anime APIs out there. And a couple of them came up like Analyst GraphQL API or Gcon API. I'm not sure how that is pronounced, but basically I just tested out the API to see what they returned. And for me, the best one was this uh, Gcon API because apparently it's the unofficial My Anime List API. And it retrieved the data that I was looking for, which is mostly just uh, an image URL, you know, the title, the type, and the score, and things like that. And of course, I fetched the data. Let me just explain this query, right? I'm going to the API and then I'm searching with a Q, which is which stands for query. And here I'm just passing in Naruto. And that's how I was able to get the data for my project. Now all that's left to do is to display it on screen. So inside of our functional component, we have to create a state. And this state is going to have to keep track of the query that we are specifying, right? We are going to add an input field. And as any time we type this input field, we're going to want to update the query inside of our component. And the way to do that is to uh, run this use state command. So there's a huge history behind uh, creating functional components and using React hooks to avoid having to, you know, create class components, but you know, I don't want to get into that in this video. Point is, uh, this is a query and this is a function to set the query to update the query. So by default, we're setting the query to be Naruto. And we're going to create an input field inside of our project. And this input field is going to be bound to that query. So and, and whenever it changes, we're going to update the query itself, right set query to the uh, current value of the input field. So if I were to you know, start typing inside of this input field, 
in say Pokemon, then Cory is going to get set to Pokemon. And what we want to also do is create a button. And this button is going to fetch the anime data. Just as a quick overview, the fetch anime data button is going to be using this code. And the main difference between the fetch anime button and what you see here is that we're going to be dynamically setting the query variable. So you can see here that instead of uh, hard coding the code to be Naruto, we're going to be using the query variable. So, you know, basically, whenever we press this button, we're going to be getting the anime data of whatever we put inside of our query. So now that we basically have the query data, we have to store that data inside of our application. So let's do that with another state variable. So now uh, we're going to create another state variable called results and set results. It's going to just be an array of anime objects. Here, this is a key thing in TypeScript, right? What I'm doing is I'm specifying the type of each item inside of the array. And the type of each item I am saying is going to contain these couple things. So we're going to have the title, the image URL, episodes, synopsis, and score. Basically, you have to manually tell the app this is the expected type of the results. And if you do that, it's going to provide you with proper type checking. And you're going to notice here that in this example, I try to call results.type and TypeScript is telling me that that doesn't exist because we didn't declare it inside of our interface. TypeScript is checking before the code runs. When I'm fetching the data and I'm setting the data, right, I'm setting all of this data. So technically, type does exist down here. The type of Naruto is TV. We assume that we are telling our project that, hey, all of the anime inside of this results is going to have these five things and nothing else. So type is going to throw in uh, an error. Obviously, in this case, if this code got pushed to production, it would still work because a type does exist. There's a lot of times when it doesn't. A lot of times we might just mess up, right? Maybe instead of uh, result.type, I put result.types or something random. And it just doesn't really work like that. So I would have to change this to results.image URL. And so now we've got the data and now we're setting the data as well. And we are displaying it. Um, we're displaying the results inside of our page. And so let's take a look at what that looks like. So this is what we got going on, simple little input field. And as soon as we press search, it's going to trigger the fetch anime data function and it's going to get the anime data. So the last thing to think about is actually styling the project. And for styling it, I use Tailwind CSS. Now this does take a couple minutes to set up five to 10 minutes. And I don't want to dive into all those details, but just know that I did a little bit of refactoring, put the anime data into an anime card.tsx file and I basically styled it. So it's nothing too crazy there, but just a little bit of refactoring to keep the code a little bit cleaner. And you know, this is what the CSS looks like. With the CSS, I was able to uh, create this rounded card with the background color. So any card that is greater than a certain rating gets a green rating if it's below a certain threshold it's yellow and if it's really bad show then it's going to be a red and i also added this like favorite section where i can click on this and then it'll favorite the anime so yeah that's going to be it for today hopefully you guys learned a thing or two about react and typescript and how to build your own sort of anime app. Now, obviously you didn't get the full details, but I'm hoping that it was able to inspire you to learn and dive deeper into uh, creating a project that you might find just hilarious or useful or anything like that. And as always, if you will enjoy the video and want to see more, uh, leaving a like is the best way to let me know that and consider subscribing for uh, more suboptimal content just like this. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys next time.